January 29th, 2010. From the stylish high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media in historic Warwick, Rhode Island, this is News on Days. <laughs> For January 29th, 2010, this is News Undies. All the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. Toyota halts production of models that won't stop going. Pat Robertson, still a jackass. Still finding World Trade Center debris eight and a half years later. Disney's Miramax reduced to boutique brand. 37-minute deliberation convicts Kansas dock killer. John Edwards. Hey gang, it's time for Celebrity Birthdays once again. I got my cake hat on, let's rock! For Saturday the 30th, Dick Martin, Dead, and Boris Spassky. For Sunday the 31st, Philip Glass and Nolan Ryan. For Monday the 1st, Boris Yeltsin, Dead, and Terry Jones. For Tuesday the 2nd, Stan Getz, Dead, and Tom Smothers. For Wednesday the 3rd, Joey Bishop and Warwick Davis. For Thursday the 4th, Clint Black and Rob Corddry. And for Friday the 5th, Stephen J. Cannell and Christopher Guest. Ah! Goes to 11. That's Celebrity Birthdays. I'm Paul Torville and I'm done! We'll have stories in detail after this. I'm an atheist. 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 President Obama gave his State of the Union address Wednesday night. Well, the first 15 minutes were wasted on sycophantic applause. Any thoughts as to which side of the room was so full of glee, or which side wasn't? While the president's speech didn't spend a great deal of time lingering on individual fine-grained hot-button issues, he did spend a fair amount of time on frank assessments of current conditions. The bulk of the speech seemed to focus on how pointless, self-serving, and paralyzed the government had become, and telling the legislature to get its collective head out of its collective ass. Sadly, Obama's idealism seems to be lost on most of his audience. The Pope, continuing to miss the point, lamented the brutality of the Holocaust without apologizing for the Catholic Church's complicity and silence during that human atrocity. Further, the Pope, while seeming to be fairly clear on God's will when it comes to condoms and HIV in Africa, he made no mention of God's divine plan with regard to the Holocaust. Way to go, Holy Father. This just in. The Pope, now even more in touch with reality, is urging a crackdown on annulments. Makes sense, because if there's one thing signaling the end of the world, it's annulments. Ben Bernanke. John Travolta. Oh, there's more. <laughs> John Travolta has reported that his faith, Scientology, has helped him continue doing whatever it is that he does, after the tragic death of his son, Jet, at the beginning of 2009. So big a fan of Scientology is he that he recently flew a contingent of Scientological ministers to Haiti to help with the relief efforts there, because that's what they need in Haiti, a parasitic religion to exsanguinate the people of what little wealth they have in exchange for e-meters and auditing sessions. In light of recent developments, Pig and Sheep have opted to play a classic opposing viewpoints from last summer. Man, spaceflight is way too risky, way too expensive. Unlike the effort to spread democracy in Afghanistan and Iraq, no risk or expense there. And besides, there's lots of problems down here on Earth the government could ignore without spending all that taxpayer money on letting small groups of brave individuals inspire us to become better educated and more pragmatically contemplative. Does he, uh, ever listen to himself? Okay, so manned spaceflight and, more importantly, a vigorous program of exploration can inspire. It can be a tremendous economic engine 
and an impetus to improve education. It can show the world that we're serious about peace if we seriously redirect our national purpose to space exploration rather than exploitation of weaker nations here on Earth. The United States used to be an admired leader. It has let itself go and is now a swaggering bloated windbag, a caricature of its former self. It's time to take back the leadership role, not by force, but by example. And now, here's This Week in Historicity with Ollie Oliphant. Hello and welcome to This Week in Historicity. This past Wednesday marked the anniversary of the start of the 1593 heresy trial of Italian scholar Giordano Bruno. While there is little dispute today that Bruno was tried by the Catholic Church and eventually executed by burning at the stake as a heretic, there is some dispute as to whether he was persecuted merely for his theological views or for his theological and cosmological views. In the year 2000, Cardinal Angelo Sodano remarked that the Bruno affair was a, quote, sad episode, end quote, and that Bruno's Vatican prosecutors did everything possible to save his life. Yes, well, sadder still, I think, is that the Catholic Church thought it could proceed with such certainty of its position, which has since been sufficiently dismantled to make it merely one among a sea of institutionalized superstitions. In an effort to differentiate its products from those that run Microsoft's Windows operating system, Apple has rejected the, quote, tablet, end quote, concept, and has chosen a different name for its use-it-like-a-clipboard computer. It's called the iPad. Responses have been varied. Apple has admitted that the iPad is, in many respects, a giant iPod touch. Most men seem to think it's okay, but nothing special. Women, on the other hand, are almost universally horrified by the product's name because it shares its root with a common feminine hygiene product. Yes, they're serious. Final news roundup and your exclusive past cast weather after this. You'll notice that when you watch News Undies, I'm always wearing a shirt from the Ursus Pacificus Kitsch Cave. Well, now you can too. You can help support News Undies by going to the Ursus Pacificus Kitsch Cave and getting some kitsch. And now, here's your exclusive past cast weather for the week ending Friday, January 29th, 2010. The heartland had rain and snow, moving towards sunny but cold conditions. Texas and Oklahoma had cold showers, then cold sun. The high plains saw snowstorms, then cold sun. And that's your exclusive past cast weather. Dancing with the stars. Look who's dead! Since last we met, the following famous people met their end. Pernell Roberts, Ali Hassan Al-Mahid. You may know him as Chemical Ali. Louis Auchincloss, Howard Zinn, Zelda Rubinstein, J.D. Salinger, and Shirley Cadell. And that's who's dead. And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? President Obama appears to have made a decision regarding the future of NASA's manned space program. And it seems as though that doesn't include manned missions to the moon. The basic idea is this. We're failing in science, math, and technology, and there's really no bigger consumers of people with those skills than the space program and military hardware manufacturers. And since we're all such peace-loving folks, let's keep the defense spending in the trillion-dollar-a-year neighborhood and keep NASA's budget down around 2% of that. That's sensible, because we're all such peace-loving folks. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. Remember, if you see news that shouldn't be news, you can email your story tips to undies at newsundies.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might have a sticky gas pedal. <laughs> In the year 2000, Cardinal Angelo Sodano remarked that the Bruno affair was a, quote, sad episode, and that Bruno's... Ah, oh, sh**. For Thursday the 4th, we're failing in science, math, and technology, and there's no, really... For Thursday the 4th, that's eight. Sadder still, I think, is that the Catholic Church thought it could proceed with such certainty of its position, that which has since... Fuck. For Sunday the 31st, Philip... Hmm. All right.